Hey, did you ever think all modern art is stupid, ugly, or too goddamn expensive? Do you think the paintings before the end of the First World War were actually good? Because Internet's favorite oil funded fake university, PragerU, feels the same. The Mona Lisa, the Pietà, the girl with a pearl earring. Well, those guys are kind of cherry picked. Here are some works of art from the same period that aren't so great. Okay, now that we know that there are bad paintings made in the same time period you seem to be praising, let's see what other biased garbage you have to say. For a score of centuries, artists enriched Western society with their works of astonishing beauty. The Night Watch, The Thinker, The Rocky Mountains. Master after master, from Leonardo to Rembrandt to Bierstadt, produced works that inspired, uplifted, and deepened us. Oh well, it might have that effect on you, but I personally feel boredom. And they did this by demanding of themselves the highest standards of excellence, improving upon the work of each previous generation of masters, and continuing to aspire to the highest quality attainable. But something happened on the way to the 20th century. Let me guess, it all went downhill from here. No more good artists that the art history books mentioned, at least, well... That seems to be their only source. The profound, the inspiring, and the beautiful were replaced by the new, the different, and the ugly. Well, that's a pretty subjective thing. Today, the silly, the pointless, and the purely offensive are held up as the best of modern art. Says him. Get this, he also mentioned modern art, so it's not like it's all art, so... I mean, if you don't like it, then why would you complain about it? I don't complain what's considered the best song of Justin Bieber. For me, it's the Jack You collab because it's the closest to my taste. Like, what's the argument? Michelangelo carved his David out of a rock. The Los Angeles County Museum of Art just offers us a rock. A rock. All 340 tons of it. That's how far standards have fallen. A rock. Oh my god, I actually cried when I found out what the rock was about. It's almost like the context matters. <laughs> How did this happen? How did the thousand year ascent towards artistic perfection and excellence die out? You want to know the secret? It didn't. Visual arts, like many others, became more and more accessible. Now a painting could be made for and by a small audience. Galleries also help rich people do tax evasions. So it just became a business focused on scratching a certain niche. You could actually do some research and find out why there is so much money being paid for such weird art. It didn't. It was pushed out. No. Beginning in the late 19th century, a group dubbed the Impressionists rebelled against the French Academy de Beaux Arts and its demand for classical standards. Whatever their intentions, the new modernists sowed the seeds of aesthetic relativism, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder mentality. So this is not a mentality. I mean, if you think about it, it's right. The standards just can't exist. I mean, like you, you Prager you is talking right now about things like execution and mastering your craft and shit like that, but it's it's just not objective. I mean, it. I mean, this is not some objective quality. This is just your taste. I am still waiting for you to prove that there is an objective standard. Today, everybody loves the Impressionists. And as with most revolutions, the first generation or so produced work of genuine merit. Monet, Renoir, and Degas still maintained elements of disciplined design and execution. The rock took a lot of discipline. I mean, it's hard to put a rock there, but you don't like that. Why? You're contradicting yourself. Just like the Bible. But with each new generation, well, I don't know any other artists, so I guess they're all shit, right? Standards declined until there were no standards. All that was left was personal expression. Says who? That's not even a real graph. Did you even bother to check the definition of art? Oh look, it's personal expression. The great art historian Jacob Rosenberg wrote that quality in art is not merely a matter of personal opinion, but to a high degree objectively traceable. 
one man one man said it guys he doesn't have to he doesn't have to like make an argument or but taking a civilized debate with the art community the man knows everything but the idea of a universal standard of quality in art is now usually met with strong resistance if not open ridicule how can art be objectively measured i'm challenged oh yeah he's gonna prove us all wrong with facts and logic In responding, I simply point to the artistic results produced by universal standards compared to what is produced by relativism. No, he did not. That's not even a real argument. What the... F the former gave the world the birth of Venus and the dying Gaul, while the latter has given us the Holy Virgin Mary, fashioned with cow dung and pornographic images, and Petra, the prize-winning sculpture of a policewoman squatting and urinating, complete with a puddle of synthetic urine. He cherry-picked a whopping four artworks and with his big brain objectively, yes, he, he actually objectively proven something that is logically impossible. Without aesthetic standards, we have no way to determine quality or inferiority. Is this fascism? Why can't all art be equal? Here's a test I give my graduate students, all talented and well-educated. Please analyze this Jackson Pollock painting and explain why it is good. It is only after they give very eloquent answers that I inform them that the painting is actually a close-up of my studio apron. I don't blame them. I would probably have done the same since it's nearly impossible to differentiate between the two. And who will determine quality is another challenge I'm given. If we are to be intellectually honest, we all know of situations where professional expertise is acknowledged and depended upon. Take figure skating in the Olympics, where artistic excellence is judged by experts in the field. I don't think this guy has any idea how the Olympics work. Surely we would flinch at the contestant who indiscriminately threw himself across the ice and demanded that his routine be accepted as being as worthy of value as that of the most disciplined skater. This guy doesn't know how the Olympics work. Not only has the quality of art diminished, but also the subject matter has gone from the transcendent to the trashy. Where once artists applied their talents to scenes of substance and integrity from history, literature, religion, mythology, etc., many of today's artists merely use their art to make statements, often for nothing more than shock value. Artists of the past also made statements at times but never at the expense of the visual excellence of their work. It's hard for angry old people like him to understand the concept of subjective value. It's not only artists who are at fault. It is equally the fault of the so-called art community, the museum heads, gallery owners, and the critics who encourage and financially enable the production of this rubbish. This is not the art community. As you said, that most museums, most galleries, and some critics, not all critics, most critics are like you. It is they who champion graffiti and call it genius. Okay, so have you ever seen fancy graffiti art? It's really cool. Here's a slideshow. promote the scatological and call it meaningful. It is they who, in reality, are the naked emperors of art. For who else would spend $10 million on a rock and think it is art? I mean tax evasion? It's not the general public that's buying $10 million paintings. But why do we have to be victims of all this bad taste? We don't. By the art we patronize at museums or purchase at galleries, we can make our opinions not only known, but felt. An art gallery, after all, is a business like any other. If the product doesn't sell, it won't be made. We can also support organizations like the Art Renewal Center that work to restore objective standards to the art world. And we can advocate the teaching of classical art appreciation in our schools. Let's celebrate what we know is good and ignore what we know is not. By the way, 
The white background you see behind me is not simply a white graphic backdrop. It is a pure white painting by noted artist Robert Rauschenberg at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. Haha, uh -huh, look at me, I don't understand this. It's stupid and pointless. Such stupid and pointless art. Yeah, this is all art. This is literally all art made in the 21st century. In conclusion, I don't think you have to like modern art. I don't. Whoa, that was easy. It's like letting people like whatever they want is like easy and doesn't affect you in any way.